Lord tonight. It's so good to have you here just to worship the Lord tonight. I hope you came expecting to give to God your all and everything within you. And I hope you came expecting God to just minister in your life tonight. Looking for God to do a mighty work, touch every life and every heart, every home tonight. We're going to open up in prayer and just welcome His presence. Ask the Lord just to have His way. Appreciate all the ones watching live stream. Appreciate all the ones here tonight. We're just going to open up in prayer and just welcome His magnificent glory to shine down upon us. Help us pray. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you one more time for allowing us to be in your house, to serve you and honor you. To thank you tonight, God. You've been so good to us. We can never thank you enough and praise you enough. You moved in a mighty way. You touched in a mighty way. God, we ask you to come down with your power and your authority tonight, Lord. Have your way. Reach down and touch in the midst of your people. <coughs> Let your Holy Ghost power and anointing shine forth in our lives. Just settle over this place tonight. It would be in one mind and one accord to serve you and honor you and magnify your holy name. You've been so good to us, Lord. We can never thank you enough. But God, we come tonight with praise on our lips, Lord. Praise in our mouth. Lord, we give you glory and honor. Lord, we thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for your many blessings. Thank you for what you're about to do, Lord. Just help us to get beside ourselves. Settle over us, Lord, that we can do your will. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' holy name we pray. The church say it. Amen. And if you'll stand with us, page 177 in your hymn. 177. Also keep Miss Brenda in prayer, Miss Mary in prayer. 
Lord will touch them. Let's also continue to keep Danny in prayer. The Lord will touch him with blood pressure and everything. And also Sister Carolyn, also her Aunt Mary, uh, her Aunt Mary's uh, son and daughter both need special prayer, special touch from the Lord to reach down and bless in their life and bless in their, uh, in their, their hearts. Also, let's keep Sister Carolyn's mother in prayer. Lord, we're touching in her need and her situation. Reach down and just do a mighty work. Also, keep baby Adeline in prayer. Lord, touch her and uh, help her to uh, do better with her teeth in there. <laughs> and uh, bless her. Let's keep, uh, let's keep them in prayer. God will touch. Also, keep uh, uh, Tim and Angel's family in prayer. Sister Kathy, Lord, we'll touch them. Bless them. Uh, let's also keep uh, uh, Brother uh, uh, Roger Coon's family in prayer. Lord, we'll touch them and help them tonight. Understand it was a, a motor vehicle accident today, but let's keep uh, uh, let's keep everyone involved in prayer. God will touch all that family, all the ones involved. God will just minister and do a miracle that others around can see that God is still on the throne and God is still working. Hallelujah. One of you have a request to give in tonight. Yes. Just remember our friend still struggling yes. and his family. Yes. Chase's friend. Family in prayer will learn all about the situation. God will move and God will minister. Hallelujah. Any others? Prayer requests. I have a meal carrier that's very sick. She is not in Yes, meal carrier very sick. Bless the Lord to touch. Keep Nancy and Alvin in prayer, Lord, we'll touch them. Help them. Yes. Pray for our lady. We still don't know. Reach out and touch that call. Reach out and bless her, Lord. Touch that. 
reach out and touch. Lord, reach out and touch uh, Tony and uh, Robbie tonight. Lord, reach out and bless them. Lord, touch Robbie Lord, right where she's at. God, move in a mighty way. Let your anointing flow. Lord, touch Sister Robbie tonight. Reach out and bless her. Lord, bless uh, Tony. Lord, reach out and minister his life. Lord, help him to be all right. Everything be okay. Lord, just reach out and touch all around us. Lord, and reach out and touch uh, Brother Roger Cook's family. Lord, reach out and touch them. Lord, reach out and minister the needs of all the ones involved with the uh, with, with the collision. Lord, just reach out and bless. Lord, you know all about it. Lord, I, uh, Lord, you know and you see. You know what's going on. Let a miracle be performed. Let a miracle happen. Lord, reach out and touch every life and every heart, everyone involved. Lord, move and minister in our church. Move and minister in our neighborhood. Move and minister in our community. Lord, help us to be what you'd have us to be. Lord, we love you tonight. I ask you to have your way during the service. Lord, let your power and the Holy Ghost anointing move and minister in life. Lord, we be your people and do your will. We love you tonight and we give you the praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' holy name we pray. The church said,
Hallelujah. Or when you go to school, I'll tell you something you will. Or else I'll tell you might be busy. One day. We'll leave you here today, but we'll be Anyways, I'll, uh, I'll explain it later, church. What we're we doing. Praise the Lord. All right. We'll, uh, yeah, go down there and do that. So I'm looking forward to that. So an opportunity. Praise the Lord. One more announcement. Jesus is coming soon. Amen. Ready or not, he's coming for a church, coming for people. <clears throat> Hallelujah. I believe. I believe I, I, I believe I just I just know that he's coming soon. Hallelujah. Can't be much longer. Hallelujah. Can't be much longer. Any other announcements? I forgot. Praise the Lord. God, I don't even know what I was not. Praise the Lord. All right. We'll get uh, Sydney and Big Bubba tonight. Take our tithe and offer. Eddie with us tonight. If you'll ask the blessed note off from please, sir. Father God, I just thank you for the preaching opportunity. Thank you for being a disciple of God. Yes, sir. Thank you for the blessing of the Lord. 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 Thank you Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is so good. Hallelujah. Every day, all the time. Hallelujah. This time, worship the Lord and Sister Rita. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'd like to do a song for y'all tonight that the Lord gave me. But before I do, I'd like to uh, just testify a little bit because I want to give you some background on this song. First of all, I think this song is very relevant to what we're going through on this earth down here today. Lots of things that have come to pass that we weren't expecting or maybe wanting. And there's been lots of diversity and objections and all the things that have happened in our country recently. But you know, one thing the word tells us not to do is worry. Because right. worry is not faith. Faith has no fear, and fear has no faith. Amen. And worry is not our job. We're supposed to believe and trust yes. in the Almighty God. Hallelujah. I want to give you the backstory on how this song came, and it, I think it reinforces uh, people not to worry, and, and hopefully will build somebody's faith tonight. Back in 2013, we were living in another state, and my husband lost his job due to a re rearrangement in, in work service. And you know how that goes. Sometimes they rearrange and people go and people come. And we know to us, he lost his job. We therefore had to move out of a home that we were renting at the time. Tried to, try to find a job and couldn't. He was well qualified and probably overqualified for most. So pickings were slim. Just kind of like nowadays, like it's happened. We were down and out. And I'm telling you, we had two car payments. Had no place to live. Had other payments facing us, not knowing how and where and when they were going to get made or if they were going to get made. But prayer started. Prayer started. And I want you to know that within a year's time, we had no home to call our own. We lived with four different families in three different states. Wow. Had to keep moving, keep trying, taking any little small job that would pay the bills and keep us afloat. You know, the money runs out when your unemployment runs out. It's a tough time and tough means and a tough way to go. But I can say right now that through it all, through it all, God never failed us. Oh, that's right. He never let us go hungry. Right. He never let us down. Every bill got taken care of. One day, shortly after the loss of his job, of course, we uh, were astounded, did not know what to do. We went to get a bite to eat at a pizza place. 
as we sat there waiting on our food and it came and trying to eat and I couldn't swallow anything. All I could do was cry. And my husband asked me, he said, what is wrong? And I said, I don't know, but I can't keep this together. I want you to know that we had to leave that pizza place with our food because I couldn't handle it anymore. I was crying so hard out to God and just got so emotional. And from that pizza place on the way back to someone's home that we were staying in for an intermediate time, God gave me this song. And the words of this song just eat in my heart for so long. And I was thankful that he gave it to me and I know it was for us, it was for me because we were in a place in a time where we had no idea where our next meal was coming from. So I know what it's like to be down and out. I know what it's like to be without. God turned us around in a number of months, put us in a home, paid off our bills, made us debt free, and moved us up into a better job for him. You know, God is there for us, people. Yes. All we have to do is believe and trust and reach out. Hallelujah. Prayer. Prayer is the key. Amen. And faith unlocks the door, let me tell you. There was a lot of tears shed, but there was a lot of prayer time. And God is good. God has not changed. He will never change. He answered our prayer then, and he can answer our prayer today. Yes. So whatever your need is today, worry not. Because my Jesus can handle it all. Thank Amen. Yes.
for him. He always equips you. He always prepares you. He always gives you what you need to do the job for his kingdom and for his glory and his name's sake. John chapter 8. Jesus went and went unto the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple. And all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery, and when they had set her in the midst, they said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it being convicted by their own conscience went out one by one beginning at the eldest even to the last. And Jesus was left alone with the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Heavenly Father, I come before you tonight loving you and praising you and honoring you. Thank you for the ability and opportunity to be here in your house. Ask the Lord to mention the message one more time. God, pour out of heaven upon your flesh, uh, your people, pour out upon, upon each and every one. Lord, are you to hear our hearts and receive? God, just reach down and bless us. Equip us tonight in the manner and the way that you want us to be equipped that we can upbuild your kingdom. God, we love you. We praise you. We thank you for all things. In Jesus' holy name we pray. And the church said, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. <laughs> Simple tonight. Title, You Have to Get Them Lost. You have to get them lost. We live in a society that doesn't recognize or no sin. We live in a society in a time where people have, uh, have went around just uh, going along, getting along, condoning things and, and doing things that, uh, that just what they want to do. And we, we understand we live in a time, and I want you to understand tonight that I believe that holiness is God's standard of living. It, that's the only way that we're going to make it out of this world uh, to a better place is to live holy and righteous and pleasing unto God. You see, until people know that they're in the wrong. Until people know, now I understand, uh, uh, people know when they when they do uh, certain things that's wrong. You know, if uh, you know if you're out here uh, and, and you see the light turn red at an intersection and you and you don't stop but you continue to go, you know that 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 that's wrong. You ran a red light, right? And so people know those things that are obvious. But I want you to understand that until people understand that, that they're lost, until people understand that they uh, fell short, until they understand what sin is, they will not repent. Until we get people to see that they're lost, they cannot be found. Until, <clears throat> until someone recognizes their problem, there won't be any help. I, I, I tend to you tonight, I uh, help transport uh, people to <clears throat> different places uh, to get help. Uh, for different types of addictions and different things like that. and But I tender to you, you can take someone all day long to a place that helps addictions, but until that person wants help, until they recognize they have a problem, <clears throat> they will not receive help. It will not work. It might last for a month. It might last for two weeks. It might last for six months. But it will not stay until they recognize, hey, I need, a, need help. I've got a problem. I've got a situation. I've got something that I need to take care of. And so I, I come to you tonight. We live in a culture. We live in a nation uh, uh, where things are, are just uh, seems like falling down around us. And I, I love that song. That, that was a beautiful song. We, we, we're looking at things going on in the world. And, 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 and I, I don't like some things that's, that's going on lately. I don't like some things that takes place lately, but you know what? I really understand that God is still God. No matter what happens or what takes place, God is still God. And as long as as long as I know God is still God, you know what? I can still live right if everyone else quits living right. If we know that God is still God, we can understand that God's going to help us to do His will, and we can do right if everybody else does wrong. You know what? We can't control what everybody else does. We can't control what everybody else says. We can't control where everybody else 
else goes, but what we can control is who we are. And who we are is God's chosen people. Hallelujah. For such a time as this that God can use us and God can mold us and God can help us to be what we need to be. But so that we can be equipped to go out here in the highways and the hedges, we need to understand some things, have this equipment that we can share with others that they'll understand. First of all, it's just simple. Now, first of all, what is sin? Romans 14 and 23. And he that doubteth is damned if he eat, because he is not of faith. For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. So if it doesn't involve faith, if it's not faith in God, if it's not for God, then it's sin. If it's not representing or edifying God, if it's not edifying faith, because we understand we walk by faith, not by sight, right? We understand that by faith we're able to serve, a, uh, serve God by faith. Hallelujah, Abraham uh, and Sarah had a, had a baby boy. And we understand that by faith, uh, hallelujah, that Jesus Christ was born to a virgin Mary. We understand that by faith, hallelujah, we can see things occur and things happen and there are blessings and miracles in our life by faith. But, and so you see everything that is our faith is and that we believe in, which believe in God is edifying God, that is good. But when it doesn't edify God or it doesn't edify faith or edify that we believe in a holy, righteous, uh, uh, judging God, then it ends up being sin. And so we've got to understand uh, that, that, that if it's not for Christ, then it's sin. If it's not uh, representing Christ, then it's bad. You see, if it transgresses the commandments, you see, as I've said many times, and I'm fixing to say it one more time, there's more than ten commandments in the Word of God. There's a lot of commandments that we need to go by, but I understand there's a lot of commandments that a lot of people around this world, they begin to put down and, and push down and say, well, that don't, uh, that don't represent in today's time. That don't represent uh, today. Well, let me just tell you, I might just meddle here tonight. It's all right. I mean, it tells us in the Word of God what sin is. It tells us in the Word of God how we ought to live, how we ought to do, how we ought to be. You see, many don't see anything wrong with their conditions. Many don't see anything wrong with the, with the way things are and the way that they're doing it. You know, many have got the mindset that, well, if it don't affect me or my house or my property, then it's all right. Let me tell you, it just because it don't affect you right at that moment, hallelujah, it's still wrong. If it's wrong and it's right, if it's right. Let me tell you tonight, hallelujah, just because. And hallelujah, and I know I'm being broadcast, and that's all right. I'm standing firm on what God says and what I believe. Let me tell you, just because uh, they allow things, this to happen, just because they say it's okay and by law you can do it, let me tell you, killing babies is against God. Hallelujah. Abortion is against God's word and against what God would have us to do. Let me tell you tonight, hallelujah, sin is still sin. It doesn't matter what, what, what law book is wrote on in the world today. Sin is still sin. If we're going to trust God and we expect God to help us when we need Him, then we better stand up for God. Hallelujah. When we can stand up for God. Hallelujah. When we're on the mountain, we better be praising Him. When we're in the valley, we still better praise Him. Hallelujah. Because God is the only way that we're going to come through this world. We can't come through. We can't trust in man anymore. We can't trust in the banks anymore. We can't trust in the retirement systems anymore. We can't trust in anything but God. Hallelujah. And we've got to understand that. And if we have sin in our life and we continue and people have sin in our life and continue in that then that separates man from God and if we're not following after God then that keeps and then there, there's, a, there's a wall there and we can't have the benefits of serving God if we have the sin that separates us. That's why it's very important that we understand what sin is and understand uh, what it is in our life. You see they, uh, they, they wanted to bring this adulterous woman in for the very act. But when they got down to the nitty gritty, they was all just as guilty as she was of sin. Because Jesus said, okay, whichever one of you is without sin, you throw the first stone. And when Jesus looked back up, they was all poof, hocus pocus, right? They was all gone out of there because they understood that they had sin in their life. They began to be convicted in their heart. They had to be shown right then what sin was. Hallelujah. Sin is not just something where everybody knows, hey, that's an adulterous woman and she did this and that's sin. That's not all the sins that there is. That's not all the sins that the Word of God talks about. Let me tell you, hallelujah, they had sin in their life that may or might have done behind closed doors or whatever the case that no one else knew about, but Jesus knew about their sin. And he showed them what it was. They had to understand that, hey, I've got a problem. <clears throat> no doubt, maybe they looked around. Maybe one looked at the other when he said that. Maybe one looked at the other and maybe said, I'm out of here. 
Or maybe another one said, Wow, do you feel that? Maybe a burning. Maybe, maybe, maybe just got a little, little hot in the place. Or maybe, maybe the heart started beating fast. I don't know how uh, it was exactly that they were convicted, but I know they was convicted because they ran away. You see, that's what people do when they're convicted. Help me, Lord. When they're convicted of things wrong in their life, they tend to want to run away. They'll sit in church services, the preachers or teachers will preach about living right and doing right, and people will uh, be, be, be pricked, and God will be drawing them, and they'll, they'll grab a hold of the pew, and they won't go to the altar, and they won't ask God to, to change their life, and they'll, they'll just run out, the door. they'll just go out, and they'll keep doing the same thing. People running from God. There's a lot of people running from God across this world. People, uh, people that have been witness to, people that have been told, people that have been taught about Jesus and knows what sin is. They're on the run. They're running from God because they, <clears throat> because they haven't accepted it or don't want to accept it in their life because they like what they're living. They like the lifestyle that they have. They like the living conditions that they're in. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, I, I think I might say it the other day, but I'm going to say it again. I like the living condition I've got now. Hallelujah. Because I'm alive with Jesus in my heart. Hallelujah. If I, <clears throat> praise the Lord, I, I, the, the, the church parsonage is a nice house. But you know what? If I had to live in a tent under a, uh, under a tree or a bridge, I, I could still have God. Hallelujah. I don't have a lot of money in the bank account. But hallelujah, I've got God and I can still live and survive. I don't have a lot of the fancy things in this world, but hallelujah, I have God in my life and I know that I can make it. <clears throat> if everything falls around me, if, if my secular job uh, falls away from me and, and I'm stuck uh, doing, doing nothing but standing for God, as long as I'll stand for God, He'll be right there beside of me. He'll lead me through and He'll carry me through. Hallelujah, the valley, the furnace, hallelujah. He'll carry me through everything that needs to be carried through. Let me tell you, God will take care of us and we'll understand what sin is and keep sin out. Hallelujah. Keep it out of the door. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You know, it's kind of like, kind of like, uh, all of you ever had a stray cat at your house. And the stray cat comes on the porch or comes around there. Uh, you know, you, you, say there's four or five cats. When you open your door, you don't just leave your front door open, just let them all run through your house, do you? Uh -uh. You kind of, kind of push them back, get your door shut, and keep them out of the house, right? But that's the kind of the way we need to be about sin. We need to say, you know what, old devil, you ain't going to slide that in on me. I, 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 I'm shutting this door, and I'm not going to let you slide that in on me. I'm not going to let you maneuver and trick and, and, and do all kinds of things to get me to live it like that and do it like that. I'm going to stay right. I'm going to stay good. I'm going to do what I need to do. I'm going to be what I need to be. I'm going to continue to, to let God work in my life. That's what, that's what we've got to do. We've got to understand what sin is. These people, these ones, these ones brought her to the temple, but yet they left her standing by herself with Jesus because they knew they was in the wrong. They found that they had to be shown. You see, sometimes we got to get down to the nitty-gritty. we got to share with people and show people what sin is and that they're wrong. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God's good. Secondly, we got to let people understand that all were sinners. You and I didn't come from our mother's womb without sin. Now, I understand that until we reach the age of, account age of accountability, that we're covered by grace. But when we understand right from wrong, we was born rebellious. We were born into sin because of Adam and Eve's sin in the garden. We were born into rebellion and born into sin. So we were also in Romans 3 3, we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You see, you, you, you hallelujah, you might have thought you was always perfect. You might have always thought, right, hey, you know, hey, I, I, I thought I was a perfect little baby. Hallelujah. You might have thought you were that perfect little baby. But let me tell you, hallelujah, none of us, none of us were perfect until we met, met Jesus. Now, we're not perfect in man's eyes, but Jesus, God, makes us perfect in his eyes. He molds us and makes us into what we need to be for him. Not what we need to be for Mr. So-and-so or Mrs. So-and-so. He makes us into what we need to be for him. We've got to understand that. We've got to share with people that, you know what, we, we wasn't always the same people. We didn't always talk right. We didn't always walk right and do right. We once were sinners, but hallelujah. You know, when Jesus comes into our heart, what do we do? We get out of the sin and business. Hallelujah. We don't go, we don't go and intentionally try to sin every day uh, because we think, because it's supposedly a past. No, it's not a past. When hallelujah, we understand we must all sin. We understand when Jesus Christ comes into our life and washes away our sins, hallelujah, we're supposed to go and sin no more and not do those things that we once did, but live a whole 
believe when we accepted Jesus, he changed all those things. Mercy walked in and changed those things in our life and changed what we had done and changed those, uh, those feelings we had and those things we did and changed us into what we need to be. And so we've got to make sure we let people know because, you know, if we go, if we go just trying to show people or share with people what sin is, they're going to turn us off if we don't explain to them that we know the lifestyle or the condition or what sin represents in someone's life because we once were there. We once had done those things. We might not have done the exact same, uh, same might not have had the exact same addictions, might not have had the same exact thing going on in our life, but we were all sinners until we accepted Jesus. That's one thing that everybody on the face of the earth uh, has exactly equal. Everyone was born into sin and they, and until they accept Jesus, they'll stay, they'll stay in sin, and they'll always be in sin until they accept Jesus into their life. Because His blood is what washes away. There's nothing. Oh, hallelujah! What can wash away my sins? Nothing. Amen. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. There's nothing out there you can't get, Mister Clean. You can't get Clorox. You can't get anything out there to wash away sin. Only the blood of Jesus. That's the only thing that'll do. And the only thing is Jesus' blood that'll wash away our sin. So when we share with people that, hey, you know what? I might not have been in the exact same condition, but I tell you that Jesus saved me from my sin. Let me tell you what I had going on. Or maybe it was the same condition. Maybe well, let me tell you, let me share with you. What well, Jesus came into my life and did. I once was on that wrong path. I once was doing those things that, uh, that I was pleasing myself, that I was pleasing, uh, uh, trying to please everyone around me, and I was doing my own thing. But hallelujah, Jesus came in and cleansed me. And now, hallelujah, I could go to bed at night with peace to know that if I don't wake up the next day, Amen. that I'm ready to go to glory. And I, can, I can drive down the road with peace, hallelujah, and know that if something happens, I, I'll be going to a better place. I, I, can, I can walk and I can talk and I can and do whatever I need to do for the glory of God because I know He's right there with me. Hallelujah. There may come a time when I have to, uh, when I have to slow down or this or that, but God will be with me. That's what we share with people. Let people know that God is what did it. Hallelujah. We've got to give Him the glory. He's the one that does it in our life. He's the one that changed. Every one of us here tonight are changed because of the mercy of the living God. And those out here in the highways and hedges, they can be changed as well. So we got to show people what sin is. Tell them what sin is. we got to share with them that all have sin. That, that, that nobody was born perfect. Nobody uh, was perfect. And until we reach glory, nobody will be perfect in man's eyes. But hallelujah, we'll be, there's a song, we'll be perfect in his presence. Hallelujah. You know, do you know those times... When maybe in an altar or maybe at an altar at home, wherever the place is, and you begin to pray, and you just begin to feel that anointing, that power just come over you, and you just you just begin to feel. Sometimes it's one of those where the hair stands up on the back of your neck and you get all happy and excited, or maybe sometimes it's one of those feelings where all you can do is cry. And you just begin to cry, and God just begin. It feels like He's just wrapping His arms around. It feels like He's just patting you on the back, saying, "Go ahead, go ahead." And you know, you, you know, those times I'm talking about. Those times when you're alone with God, and you and, and you and you talk about. You see, Hallelujah! I'm thankful for those times where we can spend with God, and He can reach down and pat us on the back, and and put His arm around us, and and help us to get through whatever we might be going through. Or maybe it's a time where we're shouting. And we're excited. It's God that does that. Hallelujah. I thank Him for those times. You see, I didn't have those times when I was out in the world. I didn't have those times when I was out doing what I wanted to do. But thanks be to God, I have those times now because God, hallelujah, shows up and shows out in my life. And I know He shows up and shows out in your life. Hallelujah. Because many of you have told me testimonies and, and told me times where God has just reached out and blessed and reached out and touched. And God just showed up and showed out. I'm going to use this as an example. This will fit right here. Hallelujah. I believe it was yesterday. Hallelujah. Sister Candace had an opportunity to go into a, a, a wonderful saint's room there where she, where she works. Hallelujah. God just came down. Hallelujah. I'll let her tell you the whole story. But God, uh, but God came down in the midst. You know why? Because, because Candace has been loving and praising on God and been serving God. And God reached down and come down in the midst of where she was at. And two people uh, got blessed. And maybe other people in the hallways got blessed because. Hallelujah, she trusted God to always be right there with her. 
that God will help me and God to minister through her life. I'm thankful that. Hallelujah. You know, there's been times when each one of you, maybe you've been over to visit somebody, a friend, or maybe you've been to uh, uh, someone's house, or maybe, uh, maybe you've been talking to somebody on the phone, and God just said hello over you, and you just begin to t uh, tell them things or, or talk to them and share love and share compassion with them, things that, that is kind of words of wisdom. You know what? That wasn't you just woke up that day with words of wisdom. That was God helping you because you've been faithful to Him. You see, when we're faithful to God, he'll be faithful to us. He tells us in Scripture, hallelujah, when we're faithful over a few things, he'll make us ruler over me. Hallelujah. Don't he tell that? And that we're in, in, in the Scripture. Hallelujah. I believe the word rightly divided. I believe the whole word. Hallelujah. I believe. Hallelujah. We'll just be faithful to God that we haven't seen nothing yet. If we'll be faithful to God, we haven't seen nothing yet. Hallelujah. We might not like things that are going on and taking place in the world. We might not like, uh, which we don't, I'm sure, if you like it, there's something wrong with it. We don't like this COVID stuff going around. We don't like all that. We don't like all this rioting and all this meanness and hatred. But let me tell you, if we'll hold on and be faithful to God, God's going to bring us through. God will deliver us. Hallelujah. He'll deliver us, people. He's always going to have a remnant, and we got to make a decision and say, you know what? I want to be part of that remnant, God. I want to be part of those ones that you can use. Hallelujah. I want to be part of those ones that will share with people what sin is and tell them, hallelujah, how they can live and let them know, hallelujah, that, 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 how they, they got to know and understand that they're lost and that we have been where they are. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The greatest miracle in a person's life is when they get saved. Amen. Hallelujah. When they get saved. Yes. And then God works out everything else. You see, and we've got to understand. Thirdly, there is a remedy. Romans 6 and 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus was the remedy for the adulterous woman. They, they, they weren't realizing and they weren't thinking. They was trying to trick Jesus and trying to get him to say uh, some other thing against what the law said. But hallelujah, hallelujah, they didn't realize and understand that, that, they, was, that they, was, uh, uh, they was bringing her to the remedy. You see, the remedy was Jesus, and he was the remedy for them just as much as he was the remedy for, uh, for, for her. Hallelujah. You see, Jesus was able to forgive. He said, I don't condemn you. He said, go, go and sin no more. Go ahead. I don't condemn you. I don't, I'm not going to bad about you. Talk bad. I'm going to forgive you. And I'm going to change your life. That's what he did for her. That's what he did for her because she stuck around. He would have done the same things for them had they not run off. But you know what? They run off. They didn't stay and ask for help. They didn't stay and tell Jesus they needed his help and needed him to save them and needed him to forgive them. And they ran off because they brought her thinking something bad was going to happen to them. But let me tell you, hallelujah, when Jesus gets involved, ain't nothing bad going to happen. It's all good with Jesus Christ in your life. It's all good. How do you it's going to work out? I'm not saying you ain't going to have problems and circumstances, but any problem you go through is good with Jesus. Because I tell you, it's terrible if you don't have Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. It's terrible. I right? go through a problem without Jesus. Amen. It's terrible. And I know a lot of people that are not saved tonight. I know I have some acquaintances that are not right with the Lord. And they have problems and they, they tell me about situation problems. And I know that it's not good in their life because they don't have Jesus. But I pray for them and ask God to help them because he's the only one that's going to help things go good in their life. Oh, they might get by for a season, might get by for a time, but nothing's going to continue to be good in their life if they don't accept Jesus in their heart. You see, Jesus was able to forgive. He was able to look past her sin. You see, that's one thing that so many Christians fail to do is look past someone's mistakes and failures and sins. Hallelujah. Help me, Lord. We're the world's worst. We'll remember all the bad things people did. But we don't remember the good. Come on. We, we, we won't talk about the bad, but don't want to remember the good. You know, that's kind of like the news. The news wants to remember the bad. We'll tell you about the bad. Don't want to tell you about the good. The good things that happened. Hallelujah. The good things that's going on. Hallelujah. We won't tell about the bad. Well, hallelujah. Well, you... You know how long that preacher preached today? Oh, it would be just a long time. I missed one. Good seat at the dinner table. I think I said it the other day. Good seat at the dinner table. I just, I just, it just was too long. We tell about the bad. But what about those two that got converted and one filled with the Holy Ghost? Amen. Oh, hallelujah. What about those, those two or three that got sanctified? Hallelujah. 
You say, we want to we want to we want to tell about the about the bad or the negative or what we say bad. Let me tell you, hallelujah. There's always a positive way to look at everything and look at everything and anything. You see, that's just like the, the glass that's, that's half full. You can say it's half full or half empty. You can say what you want to. If, there, if the glass is half full or if it's half empty, it equals the same thing. But if you talk about half empty, you know what? Well, that's going the negative way. But if you say, well, the glass is half full, that's talking in a positive form, in a positive format. And that's saying, you know what? Hallelujah. It, it, it's halfway, it's halfway gone, but I still got half. I still got something going on. You know what? Hallelujah. Uh, that's about like people saying they are half a Christian. There ain't no such thing as half a Christian. There ain't no such thing as, as straddling the fence. You're either a Christian or you ain't a Christian. Hallelujah. We got to go forth and we got to do God's will. That'd be what God would have us to be. You see, uh, as we look, we said Jesus was able to look past her sin and her problem. He forgave her. Didn't say Jesus condoned her. I didn't say Jesus didn't cleanse her from it and didn't and, 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 and like the sin. He forgave her. He looked past of what she was right then. And he looked into what she could be. Hallelujah. She could be someone who could help. Someone who could be what it is. You remember when the spies went into the town? And they went to the, the harlot's house. And the harlots are the ones that that kept them safe. You know, the king sent people and wanted to find out where, where's the spies at, where they at. And she hid them in the, what called the flax up on the roof. Hid them up there and, 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 then, and then let them go. And, and they told her, said, you know what? Said, uh, everybody in your house is going to be going to be saved. When we come in and we, we take this whole town and we take this whole city, uh, you're, you and your family that's in this house, everybody in this house is going to be saved. We're not going to, we're not going to destroy you. We're going to, we're going to help you. But you got to, you got to, you got to put the red line, the red thread. You got to put it out the window so we'll know it. We'll make sure everybody knows that nobody destroys that house and destroys that. The heart, the heart. Her family was saved and she was able to be helped because she did something good for those spies and those ones for God. You see, hallelujah, and just because someone's in sin now, just because someone's doing wrong now, don't mean it can't be a blessing to somebody else in the future. Don't mean that they can't be a help to somebody in the future. Let me tell you, just because somebody is, is as far as they can go for the devil now, let me tell you, they can be somebody for God one day soon. Hallelujah, we'll just give them a chance. Hallelujah. And so the spies were helped, and they helped her because... Because there was there was God's army, God's people, but because she did something good, they called her a heart. They called her. They knew what she did, what her profession was. But yet she did something good for them, and they helped her. They looked past what kind of position she was uh, was in. Looked past that and said, "We're going to help her. She helped us." Let me tell you, Hallelujah! That one that you walk down the street beside of her, stand beside in the grocery store. That's cursing like I don't know what. Maybe had a snort full and as drunk as I don't know what. That might be the next preacher. Amen. That might be the next gospel singer when Jesus gets a hold of them. And it might be just you that because of your love for God rubs off on them. Amen. And they see something different that you didn't shun them and you didn't put them down. And you didn't push them away, but you shared something of God with them. Whether it be a prayer, whether it be uh, Jesus loves you, whether it be we'll be praying for you. Whatever the case, you never know how far to go. Because God has a work for every one of us. And that's why I'm trying to, that God sent me to try to equip you tonight. That we've got to understand, hallelujah, that there's a remedy. We've got to share with people there's a remedy. They don't have to keep looking in the box. They don't have to keep looking over their shoulders. All they got to do is talk to Jesus. Talk to Jesus. Hallelujah. He was able to cleanse. Jesus was a remedy for them and for that lady. They didn't choose it. They didn't allow the remedy to work, but she did. She allowed the remedy to work, and she went out. Changed. Different than when she went in. And fourthly, all can be saved. All. All. Revelation 3 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. Stand at the door and knock. If any man. That means any. Any means any. 
Doesn't mean what side of the river they grew up on. Doesn't mean, doesn't matter uh, uh, how old they are, how young they are. Don't matter how tall they are, how short they are, how skinny they are, how heavy they are. It doesn't matter anything. If anyone will open that door and allow Jesus to come in, they can be saved. All can be saved. Whosoever will, hallelujah, come to know Jesus, the personal Savior. Whosoever, hallelujah, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's that whosoever. Whosoever. Didn't matter who, didn't matter what the last name was, didn't matter what the first name was, didn't matter what color party grove, didn't matter uh, what color house they had, didn't matter anything except whosoever will. Whosoever. Any. If any man. It don't matter who it is or where they're at right now. What matters is they can be saved. Yes. So many people in this world think that they're too far gone for God to save them. Mm. They're not. They're not too far gone. Nobody's too far gone. Hallelujah. Nobody's one of those that, like I talked about the other night, that, that we should be telling there's no use. There's no help for them. No hope for them. They're always going to be doing that. Always going to be living like that. Hallelujah. We shouldn't be saying that. We shouldn't be acting like that towards people across the church world and across the nation. We should be saying, you know what? Jesus can save them from that. Right. Jesus can change them from that. Right. Hallelujah. You know, all the... All those people that's out there lying, telling things that ain't so. Oh. Hallelujah. Jesus can save them. He sure can. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus still saves. Amen. You know what? People all the way, I said the other night, I'm going to say it again. People can be saved all the way from the outhouse to the White House. Right. Amen. People can be saved. All people. But what they've got to understand is that it's Jesus that will save them. It's not a man. Right. It's not a woman. Okay. It's not anyone on this earth. It's not a ritual that a person does to make them feel all ooey gooey and better. But it's Jesus that'll save them. Yes. Mm, help me, Lord. Uh -oh. There's not a, there's mm, there's not an incense that you can burn oh. that'll save you. Right. Jesus is the one that'll save you. Right. There's not, a, there's not some words and things that you do and, and some movements you make with your hands that are saving. It's Jesus that will save you. It's not <clears throat> whose bank account you can fatten up that they'll send a prayer your way that's going to save you. It's Jesus that's going to save you. Hallelujah. His salvation is free for whosoever will. Whosoever will come, Jesus will save you. And Jesus will change you. And Jesus will sanctify them if they'll let it. And Jesus will fill them with the Holy Ghost if they'll let it. Hallelujah. You see, what we need across this world is a lot more people full of the Holy Ghost Amen. instead of hot air. Amen. Hallelujah. We need a lot more people across this world, church world, filled with the Holy Ghost, yes, not hot air. We need to be sharing with people that it's the Holy Ghost that draws. And it's the Holy Ghost that helps us to be the vessels. But it's the Holy Ghost that allows that conviction to be on our life. That other people feel that conviction. That, that shadow power of Peter, so to speak. That people can feel the anointing. People can feel that, hey, there's something wrong. It's conviction in their heart. You see, it's the unction of the Holy Ghost. You see, there's a lot of people in this world that are dying lost tonight. But you know what? God's got a people that can reach them. That's right. If we'll just do his work. He's got you and I. He's got other church people across this world that can reach them if we'll just do our very best. There's no time to sit down. No time to throw in a towel and give up. It's time to march on. Amen. It's time to march on. It's time to be where we need to be. Salvation is for all if they'll accept it. Hallelujah. You see, you've got to get people lost before you can get them saved. Hallelujah. Well, you, you got you, you, you got to let them understand what's going on and what the deal is before you can get them saved. You got to get them lost. A lot of people out here think that they're okay. There's a lot of people that attend places of worship regularly that thinks that they're okay, but they don't have the fruit of a holy God. They don't have fruit of what God wants them to do in their life. Hallelujah. We've got to get back to the place where we say, God, help me to share with someone with love 
their condition so that you can change their condition and make them what they need to be. God's looking for some people that say, you know what? Here I am, Lord. Use me. Here I am. Help me to be. Lord, I, I might not have the greatest words to say. I might not be the smartest uh, person around. But Lord, help me to be a willing vessel that I can reach somebody for you. Help me to share with someone with love that you'll forgive them of their sins. You'll cleanse their life. You'll change them from what they're doing and what they're used to and you'll help them to be what they need to be. You see, people out there, they're lost. They're running as hard as they can for the devil. They're running as hard because they're, they're, they're food and they, they're, they're doing all the things that they're doing, running as hard as they can. Why can't the Christians run that harder or harder for God? Why can't we run, hallelujah, as hard as we can for God, reaching the lost at any cost? There's a lost world out there. I shared yesterday, uh, yesterday you know, you know it, it's, it, it, it's wonderful when you know a person's life and you've been around them and you know that they're ready to go to heaven and to be with Jesus. You know that they're blood bought, washed in the precious blood of the Lamb and they're ready to leave this world and to go to a better place. It's great and it, it, it's awesome to know that. But I shared it's not so awesome or good when you don't know. That's right. When you don't know if a person got things right before they took their last breath. And, and it's also terrible to, to not know that they're in a better place. Because you see, if people don't have Jesus in their heart and they don't accept Jesus in their life, when they leave this world, they're not in a better place right. if they don't know Jesus. We have to show people that they're lost and undone and need God. Hallelujah. These false religions and the false doctrines and watered down religion and candy coated sermons are going to reach the lost. It's going to be the dedicated words from God that we share with people that will reach and will infiltrate that dark, cold heart and help them to see, you know what? Let me try Jesus. Let me try Jesus in my heart. Let me try. I've tried everything else. Let me try it. And you know what? You'll see people coming to know the Lord as a Savior. All we got to do is be willing to share with people and let people know. Hallelujah. Just stand with me tonight. As I said earlier in the message, I came by the grace of God to equip you. Let others know that they're lost. Let them know what sin is. Let them know that all have fallen short of Fallen short of the glory of God. All have sinned. Fell short of the glory of God. Let them know. Let them know that all can be saved. Hallelujah. Let them know that Jesus is remedy. The wages of sin is death. We earned death. We earned what we got. But Jesus came in. The gift of God is eternal life. Jesus came on the scene and gives eternal life. I've told people before and I'm going to say it again. I'm going to live for eternity. Hallelujah. I'm not, I'm not going to live on earth for eternity, but I'm going to live for eternity. Hallelujah. You're going to live for eternity. Everyone on the face of earth is going to live for eternity somewhere. Either a place called heaven or a place called hell. Eternity. That's forever and ever and ever. I want to do what I can to reach the lost. Hallelujah. As we pray this final prayer tonight, I ask you, if you, if you feel like that, if you feel like Preacher, I, I feel like that. I, I want to do everything I can to reach the lost. I want you to pray that and tell God and have him show you what you need to do and what you need to say to people to help them understand their condition and that Jesus loves them and he'll save them and he'll change their life around to be where they need to be. Help us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight loving you and praising you. Lord, we thank you tonight for everything you've done, your many blessings. Lord, thank you for this message. Lord, I thank you for everyone here tonight, everyone watching live stream. God, I ask you to move in a mighty way. I ask you to touch. Lord, I, I've said what, uh, what you've laid on my heart, and I, I've done the very best I can do, God. Lord, I, I know that you've touched our lives. Lord, tonight you sent me to equip everyone. 
then we know that when we get out in the highways and the hedges, we've got something we can share with people. Lord, help us to be those willing vessels that say, you know what, I want to do something to reach someone else. I want to reach the lost at any cause. I want to reach someone that's lost and undone. Lord, help us to have the right words of wisdom to say. Help us to have the right things to say. Help us to be able to share with people that they're lost without hurting their feelings, without making them upset and mad, but share with them they're lost and show them the right path and the right way to go, that you are the only way. Lord, you'll come in and you'll change them and you'll save them and forgive them and cleanse their life. Lord, help us to be those, those the, the remnant that, you, that you're going to have in these last days. Help us to be those that will share your gospel with those around. Help us to be those that will reach out uh, in the world, Lord, and let people know that you love them and you care for them and you gave your life on Calvary for them. God, I ask you to move and minister to every one of our lives. Lord, minister and move in our church. Lord, and reach down and send the people from the north, south, east, and west. Send the people that need to know you as a personal Savior. Lord, help us to have the right words. Every one of us to have the right words, the right things to say. Lord, that people will understand their wrongs. And Lord, they'll make it right with you and change their life. Lord, so they'll be prepared for your coming. Lord, uh, uh, eternity is a long time. Lord, and we've got to make a decision while we have breath in our body. We've got to make a decision on who we're going to serve and where we're going to end up. Lord, one day. And Lord, uh, Lord, help us to always be uh, understanding and knowing that we've got to continue to serve you and live right and do right in these last days, no matter what falls around us, no matter what tumbles uh, tumbles to the ground around us, God, we got to continue to praise you and live for you and do your will. Lord, we just ask you to go with each and every one, keep them safe, that we go forth and do your will. Lord, if there's anyone watching or anyone that's here that's lost and undone, help them to make things right with you before it's everlasting too late. Lord, change their life, change their heart, and do a mighty word. Lord, help us to be those witnesses. You've called us to be. Be with each and every one. Lead them and God. Touch all those that aren't here. For whatever reason, we love you and we praise you and we thank you. In Jesus' holy name we pray. And God's children say it. Amen. Amen. Thank you for coming tonight. Thank you for watching tonight. Don't forget Jesus loves you. Pastor David loves you as well. God bless you. We love you. Good night.